talk about divide and conquer, man. This beef between blacks and Mexicans is the stupidest shit out, although it feels very real to a lot of y'all. So I'm going to break down why this is all bullshit and why we need to overcome it and what's at stake if we don't. So first of all, hi, I'm Theo E.J. Wilson, here to hit y'all with a little bit of a history lesson. Number one, Mexican-American War ends on February 2nd, 1848, drawing a bullshit line through territory that used to be nothing but Mexico. And some of these territories we know currently as Arizona. New Mexico, right? We got um, Nevada, parts of Colorado, and of course, California, right? All of those states, at least the southern portion of those states, used to be absolutely Mexico, right? So you have people who are indigenous here made foreigners on their own land, all right? So black folks, let's address your ass real quick. Stop hating on them. Stop it. You're just afraid because you've been second place all this time and now you're afraid to see what happens to you when you're third. That's a legitimate fear. But attacking Mexicans and calling them foreigners means you're joining forces with the same uh, shit that oppresses you. How does that work? Where they do that at? I, um, I think that if you see Mexicans moving into your neighborhoods and shit like that, well, you need to learn from them and practice group economics and group commerce and move as a unit. Remember when we used to do all that stuff? And stop talking about they taking your goddamn jobs because you don't want them jobs. Black people ain't done them jobs since the goddamn 60s. So get over yourself, all right? When you begin to other people who are indigenous to this land, you join forces with the colonizer. It's like this. I went to the Lakota Reservation uh, in Gregory, South Dakota, and my silly ass was like, wow, look at all these Mexicans. Yeah, there's Mexicans everywhere. I can't wait till I see, some, see me some Indians. I was like, idiot. The difference between Mexicans and Native Americans is the difference between me and a Nigerian. It's an ethnic difference, but racially they are the same. So, get right. Now, Mexicans, there's some shit I need you to understand about black people. Number one, we're not immigrants. We didn't come here looking for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We are captives. We are the children of captives. And so, our karma is different. Like, how we move in the world is different. Our approach to America is different, okay? And so, we couldn't go back home because, as you notice, Africa's a little bit further than Mexico. You know what I'm saying? And if we went back home, they were under colonization. Now, wait, now what? who wants to leave America and go back to Africa and don't even speak the language and... You decrease your standard of living and have to deal with just another form of white supremacy. So we had to stay here and fight it out, okay? And if you see any animosity from black people, any racism from black people, that's fear. That's fear that a slave has that, God damn it, I don't want to go back. And if they're preferring you over me when they hire for the jobs, that they're acting like you're the preferred minority, as does happen in all white supremacist caste systems, Right? then we end up at the bottom again because the darker people always end up at the bottom. Look up what happened in South Africa when it wasn't just blacks and whites, it was also Indians and Polynesians uh, were also oppressed under uh, the caste system of white supremacy and they just ordered it from light to dark, light to dark, which might explain some of the colorism that I've seen in the Mexican community and why everybody on Telemundo don't look like the real Mexicans that I know, right? And so... You have to understand something, Mexican folks. Um, you've had our back for a long time. A lot of y'all don't even know the truth about how Mexico has a deep black history. Number one, Mexico beat America to the black president game uh, by over 200 years. By the name, uh, a guy by the name of Vicente Guerrero was the first black president in the Western Hemisphere, and he was the president of Mexico. He was an Afro mestizo. Now, when they repainted his picture, they whitened his features up so that you could see the kink in his hair and the breadth of his nose. But all of his writings like, yeah, I'm a black man and slavery will be illegal. And then he issued an edict to the United States and said, any slave that can cross the Mexican border has automatically got his freedom. And Mexico held up their end of the bargain. The story of John Horse, the greatest slave revolt leader there ever was. So great they had to hide his name. John Horse fought the uh, Seminole Wars down in Florida won freedom for his, uh, for his fellow black Seminoles. They settled in Oklahoma. The American presidency changed, and then they made him an outlaw. So he had to escape, and the only place he could go was Mexico. So him and the black Seminoles left Oklahoma and right, made it to the Mexican border. And when the slave catchers tried to capture John Horse and the black Seminoles, the Mexican army killed him. 
shot him dead right there. John Horse became a general in the Mexican army and lived out the rest of his days because America uh, betrayed black folks and Mexico had black people's back. Okay, something else Mexicans y'all got to know. Uh, look at this, man. They took more Africans to Mexico than they did to America. So then the question is, well, where the hell did they go? Well, Mexicans, go ahead and find yourself a mirror. In the 1700s, the Catholic Church relaxed the breeding laws so that the races could start mixing. And the African features was absorbed into the mestizo phenotype. That's why George Lopez, when he got his DNA tested, came up 4% sub-Saharan African. Most Mexicans have a very dark-skinned grandma or grandpa that they don't really talk about, whose hair was a little bit curly and whose nose was a little bit wide, but they called morenas. And we're not morenas. That was sangre de Africa. You see what I'm saying? We are actually one people. So all that talk about mayate, dead that. All that talk about niggers this, niggers that, dead that. It's time for us to come together. The reason why we've been pitted against each other is because in the American caste system, which has been white supremacist since 1492 until 1971, so it's not going to change the habit overnight. In that caste system, we get pitted against each other. And when we get pitted against each other, then we have these gang wars that's going on uh, that end up becoming race wars. And of course, the prison industrial complex profits because Corrections Corporation of America just built the anti-immigration wing and they snatching up my peoples left and right, right? And why my peoples, I'm, call, I'm calling Mexicans my peoples, right? These are my friends. My, my, my homeboy, uh, G, got deported on some bullshit, right? So we are either going to come together as a family or, or pair us together as fools because la gente unida jamás será vencida. Till next time, I'm Theo E.J. Wilson. Go.